I have on screen here a little conditional while loop um, that counts from 1 up to, but not including 10, when it runs. Um, but what may be more appropriate instead of a conditional loop, which is really good when I'm getting input from the user and I want to keep it going um, depending on what they're typing over and over again, if I'm making a loop like this where I know that I want to count from 1 to 9, um, there's another kind of loop that actually has the major components of this built in to the top um, so that it's very clear that you're starting and stopping at certain numbers. And that is the other kind of loop that exists. It's called an iterative loop. Um, and specifically, we are using what's called a for loop. So let me rearrange some things here to show you what a for loop looks like. So the first thing is, instead of the word while, it's the word for. And what we do is we rearrange some of these components. So I'm going to take this um, line in which we make a variable to use as the counter for the loop, and I'm going to put it inside the heading here. And in a for loop, this first part is called the um, initialization expression. So this line actually only runs the first time you get into the loop. Um, during the repetitions of the loop, it doesn't run again, which makes sense because you wouldn't want to restart your numbering every time the loop goes. Okay. This part in the middle, which is our Boolean expression um, that we already had in our while loop, is called the uh, continuation condition. So we want our for loop to keep going so long as this is true. So the idea is very similar to a conditional loop. This condition, if it's true, our loop's going to go again, and if it's false, it's going to stop. And then the last piece of the for loop heading is actually my update. So I'm going to take this increase of num, and I'm going to move it up here, and then it loses this final semicolon. And so this thing is called the update expression, and that tells the, um, the loop control variable, which is num, how to count. So in this case, it's counting up by ones. Okay. So if I run this thing, it should act just like the while loop did. Um, but now I have a nice, neat single line that shows me um, how it starts and stops and how it counts. Okay. Um, so what do you need to know about this? Well, you can count up, you can count down, you can count um, by twos, by threes. Let's say I wanted this to count from two up to and including 10. Um, I could right here make my update expression be num equals num plus two, or I could do the shorthand version like that. There is no like plus plus two though, that doesn't exist. So now this will count up by twos. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If I wanted to count down from 10 to 1, I'd have to change these, count down. And right here, if I'm counting down, I want to keep this going while it's bigger than 1, so I don't want to, I want to flip my sign. So now this counts backwards. Okay. Um, some other things that you should know. Um, this variable right here, when it is declared inside the heading of the for loop, doesn't exist outside the loop. So even though it looks like I've declared a variable, um, the scope is restricted to the for loop. If I attempt to output num here after the loop, it will tell me that I can't do that um, because it's unidentified um, or undefined. Because this guy inside the heading means it only exists in the loop. Now what I can do it's I can declare this before the loop if for some reason I want it to exist past the loop. And then in the heading here, I simply leave the type out. So know this variable exists. It'll go from 10 to 1. And once the loop is finished, it can, it can still be accessed because it's no longer restricted to a scope inside the for loop. Let's see what it prints out as the final value. Ah, so there's my 0. Um, so if you're looking at a for loop, just so you know what order things happen in, let's say your, your code comes down from the top, it does this first line, it checks the condition, if the conditions are true, it does the lines inside the brackets, it goes up here, updates its value, then checks the condition again, and if it's true, execute this, the things inside, again, come up to the update expression, adjust it, check if it's true, run the things inside. 
Um, what else might you want to know how to do with a for loop? Well, what if I actually do sort of want to still have user input? I'm going to put this back the way it was um, a little bit. I want to count um, up to or down from a number the user gave me. Well, all I have to do is make another variable that's sort of like the, the inputted value um, and say, like, give me the number Oops. and grab it. And then let's say I want to count down from that number they gave me. I'm still going to keep a little dedicated loop control variable, but here I'm going to put the variable that has the user's input into it. So now if I run this, oh, where's my error? Mm-mm-mm, run this up. Oh, I can't get it. Okay, no error, so what's up? Okay, if I enter the number 20, now it counts down from 20. So if I want to incorporate user input, I can. Um, I just keep a second variable for that input and then keep my dedicated variables for counting.